Before we start, I'll just invite you to bow your heads for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here today. Thank you that we have made the effort to be here um, to support the teens and that we have so many of them here today. Can you be with all those taking part in the service? Give them strength, courage and confidence. And Lord, we know that regardless what, hap what happens, you will do the rest. So please be with our speaker and everybody else taking part, I pray in your name. Amen. Testing. The teams are going to come forward now and they're going to collect the tithes and offering um, after which we will then present, uh, resume uh, with Pastor Bonnie.
we will be singing as we're marching over to Jerusalem. Feel free to like stand up and join in. I want to make a special appeal. We are here to praise the Lord. We are here to worship. So we don't have performance or people are here to perform and we are here to what? To watch. So I want to encourage us. Let us all get involved in the worship. So let us support our young people. So I'm going to give the microphone to the young man. And please, if you feel like stand and stand, we are not forcing you, but be in a spirit of what? Worship. The Lord has been so good to you. The Lord has done so much for you. Even on your way to the church, something could have happened, but he kept you alive. And if he's kept you alive, this is the place to glorify his name. Amen. going to sing is I just want to thank you.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing me. Thank you, Jesus. Light of the world. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. to worship. days.
Okay, at this time, we're going to welcome uh, the SEC director, Pastor Juju Bonnie, who's going to bless us with his message today. Morning, saints of God. Happy Sabbath, saints of God. If you don't mind, I will kindly ask us if we can all rise and read the word of God. In reverence of God's word, we sing when we stand, so it's my tradition. In reverence of God's word, if we can turn our Bibles to First Samuel. Chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I will be reading from verses 40 to 50. If you are there, just say amen. amen. Then he took his staff in his hand. And he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. And he put in a shepherd's bag in a porch which he had, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth. Rudy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the bears of the earth and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear. And with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the bears of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. 48. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, so that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth. Verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and stone and struck the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Allow me to read the 51. Therefore David, David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, and drew out of his shell, and killed him, and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Amen. Father, 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 your children have come to hear a word from you. We know you are in this place. You said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Lord, we are here to worship. We come here to glorify your holy name. Spirit of the living God, please fall afresh on all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we be seated? You 
know we live in a time where a lot of a lot of things are being said about young people. A lot of challenges are in their way. I have got uh, teenagers in my household. They, they won't come with me this morning to Chesek. They prefer to go to their church. But it's one of those things. But every now and then, I have my own challenges in my home as well. But I'm here this morning to encourage somebody or to say to all our young people here, it's great to see you in the house of the Lord. Because often than not, we keep on hearing there are so many of our children, sometimes we, we give that discouraging statement. They, they are not in a church, they are in the street. But Chesek and everybody here who has come from Maystone, we need to glorify God that there are a good number of young people in the house of the Lord today. I, I before I will even go, I also want to say thank you to your church pastor, Dr. Steve Thomas, for giving me this invitation. And of course, your youth or your teens leader. Oh, mine, oh, mine. You have got a dynamic young lady. When I say dynamic, she doesn't play, you know. She's always on the case. Pastor Bonnie, have you done this? Are you doing this? Where are we? And if you got this, uh, the, the, the somebody like your teens leader in the church, and I believe we got so many young people in the church, sometimes the church is not using them. Mm. The church is not giving them the chance. I'm not talking about Chesek Church, you know. I'm talking about where I come from. I've been in places, and even when you are, are, are 32 or 30 years old, and you have got a certain position in your workplace, you, you've got management or directorship, you, you, you have got uh, 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 colleagues that you are managing, you are in charge, but yet still, you come to the house of the Lord, and they tell you you are too young to serve. Mm. You are too young to be, a past, uh, to be an elder. You are too young for you to do this. And, and, and then we keep on, you are too young, you are too young, and often they are not the same person who has got responsibility, the same person who is making the company, bringing a large turnover, we see them going through the door. So when we have got young people here, we need to praise God. Amen. Jesus says, suffer the little children. I know young people are not little children, but the scripture says, suffer the little children to come, what? Unto me. He said, forbid them not for what? For such is what? Is the kingdom of heaven. Then there's also a Bible scripture that says, except you become one of what? This little ones, you cannot what? Inherit the kingdom of God. So I want to thank the parents who have done their work. I want to praise the parents who keep on working on their young people. I want to thank the parents who have also not given up. Because often they're not as a minister of the gospel. I hear this every now and then. Pastor, my children have left the church. Pastor, I have done everything and they are not coming. And I, I keep on saying the same statement I say to them. Keep on praying for them. There is something that I want all of us to know. The fact that our elder brothers are not here, you, young people. The fact that our children, our grandchildren is not here does not mean they have left the church. Is somebody hearing me this morning? We need to pray for them. Sometimes they are going on their own journey that the Lord will, will bring them back. So as, as, as I quickly look at this, I just want you to look on this subject. I want to speak to you about stepping forward. Let's, let me hear the young people say it. What am I speaking to you about? No, come on, talk to me. I didn't come here today, no. Stepping forward. Let me hear you guys say it. All right, so let's say it in uni, 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 unison. Stepping forward. Let's go. Amen. So that is the title of my topic, Stepping Forward. So, so I want to say something. My sermon applies both to the older folk as well as to the young people. Stepping forward. Stepping forward. Young people, the Lord is looking. He's looking for boys and girls. Uh, he's looking for young men and young women 
He's looking for a church individuals that he will what? Give or grant them his Holy Spirit and that they could make a difference in the environment or in the world you are living today. My young friends, I strongly believe you can be that young person. You can be the person the Lord wants to use. And so when you look at this scripture, the scripture we have just read, it's a well-known scripture. You have heard the story over and over and over. It's been acted into movies. But I want to bring some lessons to you. Because sometimes you look at it like a, a pattern. I just want to encourage you. You know, when you have got this enthusiasm, when you have got this energy, when God has blessed you with something, I pray that you will use it. You will use it positively. You will use it in a way that God will also empower you to win somebody for his kingdom. David, 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 when we look at the scripture, David, the Bible says, he steps forward in faith. And the Lord grants him victory because he trusts in the living God. Can I repeat it? I'm saying to you, David steps out in faith because he trusted in God. And because he trusted in God, God used him. And victory was granted to him. Because often than not, if you tell yourself that you are going to fail, if you tell yourself that you are not going to win, if you tell yourself you are not going to pass this exam, if you tell yourself I am not good enough, it's like you have already won. You have already defeated yourself. Let me, let me put it in a way you, you will catch it. So I've got, I've got a teenager son. I know yeah, he's not watching and they don't know... Uh, so, so, uh, why? because, yeah, they, they don't like when they are here. They don't like me talking about that. Is the best way sometimes as a preacher, you talk about the things you know, your experience, not other people's experience. So, 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 I've got this, my, my, my son, and I know he's struggling in one of the, the subjects. But I've, I've just noticed it's not that he's struggling, it's the mindset. The mindset. The mindset of him concentrating and sitting down and focusing on the subject, he doesn't want to do it. Talk about soccer. Oh, my, oh, my. Daddy, my training is on Tuesday. Where are you? Are you picking me? Anything about football, he is there. Even when he's eating, he's watching the iPad. He's following it closely. But when it comes to his studies, I always have to chase him about. The point I'm trying to say to you that when you set your mind to achieve something with God on your side, with the living God on your way, you will become that achiever. Amen? So the Bible tells us, and when you read behind the story, young David is around 16 years old. Is there anybody here who is 16? 16. Is there anybody here who is 16? Guys, 16? 16? Good. All right. David is a young boy, 16 years old. And when you look in the Bible, proud to the one we read in, in, in verses, um, when you come to 28, quickly 29, or no, before you go to 29, yes, verses 4. It says, and a champion went out from the camp of Philistine named Goliath or from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with coat of, ma of mail, and his weight of coat was 5,000 shekels of silver. This guy was what? He was very big. He was more than the ordinary person. And, 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 Dave, and David and Entai or, or Israel are scared because Goliath is on the scene. But listen to something. Goliath is not there because he was kind of threatened. But Goliath's presence, he was at the same time teasing them. He was at the same time making mockery of them. He was at the same time saying to guys, if you guys fail, you have got a man who can fight me. In other words, this is your chance. If anybody cannot come and fight me, I am going to fight you. And I'm not only going to fight you. Once I have defeated you, you guys are going to serve me. Just imagine. But the Bible says David kills him with a stone. Now, what am I trying to say? He said, David kills Goliath with a stone. So, young people, hear me now. No matter how young you are or your ages, if you can go in the spirit of the living God, God will give you the victory. Can I repeat it again? I'm saying no matter how, your, how young you are, if you go in the spirit of the living God, victory will be yours. So, so Pastor Bonnie, what are you trying to say? You see, often than not, 
we, we, we have got this mentality. Please forgive me. I respect the old age. I respect my parents. I respect our elderly folks. But there is something that sometimes we tend to uh, often define age. Once somebody is very old, this is it. That, that is sometimes some, some cultures. That is how I'm choosing my words carefully. I, I know where I am. I know I'm in Chisick. So I'm choosing my words carefully. If I was somewhere, I would say it in another way. But, 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 but we tend also to look down on age. The fact that you are young, when an elder person speaks, even sometimes when they are not saying the right thing, you then or what? Challenge them. We, we are in an age where we tend also to look at the way or, or we, we, our mindset is also on the way people what? dress. We tend to put people in a certain category. If I dress in a certain way, if I act in a certain way, then I can easily be acknowledged. But if I appear in a certain way, nobody tends to listen to me. It's just like listening to me this morning. The point I am saying to you, you can be young and still be wise. You can be young and God can still use you. You can be young and God will grant you victory. The father that I am old and I have done it all, does it mean sometimes when I'm doing wrong, the young person cannot correct me? Amen? But so Paul tells young Timothy, the apprentice in ministry, he said, Timothy, don't let anyone make fun of you just because you are young. He says, set an example for others to follow by what you are saying and what you do as well as your love of faith and purity. This morning, brothers and sisters, I'm saying what? Trust in the Lord with all, with all the understanding. The Bible says what? Lean not on your own understanding. All your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So God is looking for young people who can step forward in faith. So the first person God wants to use and young people, if somebody should ask me, Pastor Bonnie, so just give me some points, some, some pointers that at the end of the day I can go home. And if anybody asks me, what did I hear from church? So then listen to me. The first person or the first thing God wants to use, somebody who can step forward in faith, God is looking for a common person. That is my first lesson. God is looking for a common person or God is looking for an ordinary person. What am I trying to say? You see, when, as I said, when we, we, we tend to look at people, we tend to look at people's appearance. We tend to look at what degrees people have gone to school to have. We, we tend to think about the families they come from, the car they drive. But what I'm saying to you this morning, God is looking for an ordinary person. God is looking for a common person. God is looking for someone that he can use. What are we trying to say in this scripture? God uses common people. And I want to hear me, our brothers and sisters. God uses common people because David did not go to the valley of Elah, as we have read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, to fight and kill Goliath. Follow me carefully. David did not get up in the morning and say, I am going to the valley of what? Elah. And when I get to the valley of Elah, I am going to kill Goliath. That is what the scripture says. The Bible says, David's dad is the one who calls him and he said what? I want you to go and give loaves of bread to what? Your brothers, your elder brothers, your, your senior brothers who are on the forefront of the war with King Saul. Now the point I am trying to say, oh, this is what attacks even David's servant or the dad's servant could have easily done it. But when David's dad calls David to go on this errand, David was obedient. David did not disrespect his father. David decided to go on this mundane tax, this ordinary tax. And so David decided to go into what? The battlefront, not because he was going to kill Goliath, but because his daddy sent him. Young people, what am I trying to say to you? The point I'm making to you, we need to be obedient. God uses obedient people. God uses common people. David did not think of himself too big to do what his father told him. David just became obedient. But one of the things I saw in the scripture, because when David went to the place, he went at the right time. He was in the right place at the right time. 
God used him. I mean, let me, let me put it in a way. It's important for all of us to know that we can be at a certain place at the right time and at the what? At the right moment. Let me put it in a way you can catch it. So many years ago, I went to school in Jamaica. Many, many, many years ago. Uh, in the 90s. I, I, young boy, I didn't want to stay home. I wanted freedom from my parents. So I can go to school, university, back home in Ghana. One day I got up, I went to my parents. I said, I want to go to school in Jamaica. They say, what? Who do you know in Jamaica? I say, I want to go to school in Jamaica. My mom sat me down. She did everything she could do to, to dissuade me from uh, uh, going forward with my plans. But I, I managed to persuade my mom. I'm the first born. My mom just passed two years ago. So, so she did everything. said, listen, son, you are the eldest. And, and, and your siblings are looking uh, to you. I said, mom, I want to go to Jamaica. Because my dad was so straight. As I said at Sabbath school, dad is a pastor. Uh, and, and, and he was the, the African, you know, the African straight father, father. You can't do anything, you know. So if it's church, I'll be sitting here. Every, I don't have no freedom. So to me, I saw Jamaica was what? A way to get out of their way. So uh, finally, I took them to a certain pastor who uh, was a very good friend. I got a pastor to influence my parents. So they will allow me to go. And I, I got through. They asked me my plan. When you get to Jamaica, <laughs> I said, I'm going to school. What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to study medical technology and I'll study theology. So, how are you going to pay your school fees? <laughs> I said, I learned there is a, a, a program in the school called Work Study. So, I'll, I'll be working and studying. My mom says, son, I can only help you with one year school fees. That is what I'm saying to you. If you want to fly because you want to have an experience in an airplane, there is a school in Nigeria. We will buy you a plane ticket so you can fly to Nigeria. And every time you want to go to school, we can fly. I say, no, mom. I want to go to Jamaica. So they said, okay. If you are going to go to Jamaica, what is what we're saying to you? When you get there, after the first year, you are on your own. I said, no problem. I've got everything figured out. I came with my calculation because you know what? I had a friend who was already in Jamaica. So who is writing to me and telling me, my friend, come here and have fun. Young people, I am, I'm not just saying a story, but I'm saying a story to get to a point. I am saying to you, we are talking about young David that has been sent by his dad to go into what? Uh, to give food to the elder brothers only to arrive there and realize there is what? Commotion. There is war. There is a fight. Goliath is there and is tormenting the children of God. And I'm saying that sometimes you need to be at the right place at the right time. So fast forward, I, I, I pass England. I get to Jamaica. I, I, I will tell you the story another time. But I, I'm in Jamaica and after first year, second year, school fees not coming. The work study program didn't work for me. I can't pay school fees. No, seriously. So I am supposed to graduate from a school in four years. I stayed there six years and no graduation. Mm. So in one of the difficulties that I went through, I, I had to leave the campus, travel to the West uh, University of the West Indies, UWE. Those of you know, so I went to Kingston, I, and I spent time with a, a, a colleague who was then studying in Kingston. And so when I come to myself, listen, we need to have prayers. We need to have fasting. So uh, three of us gathered there. We were praying, and we were fasting. I'm talking about being at the right place at the right time. I have cried enough. I have lived in Jamaica enough and graduation upon graduation will come and I'm still in the same place. I've only gone to school and then many years has and, and there were times I remember when I'm at the school gate working as a security. The individuals that I sat in the classroom that have graduated, they will pass up and they will look at me and say, African, what are you doing here? Am I talking to somebody? So after three days of fasting and prayer in this uni room, because at a certain point, I felt all hope was gone. 
I didn't see how I was going to win this battle. The sole purpose of going there was to finish my education. Not to go there to be a tourist. I don't, I've not seen any tourist who stays more than three years at a place. Tourists, you go one week, two weeks, and you come back. But I'm, I'm, it was, I'm a forever tourist. To the extent that I was even eligible to apply for the Jamaican passport. And then, and then, and then the what happened after the three days of this fasting and prayer? We decided to despair from the room. Because among all the three of us, we have one thing in common. We were all going through our challenges. But we all believe in the power of the living God. We all believe God can show forth a way. So after the three days, my friend number one goes his way. Friend number two went to another place. I'm friend number three and I'm sitting in the room and all of a sudden there is a knock at the door. This guy comes in the place with a lot of dreadlocks. And, and all that, listen, the man knocks at the door and he said, uh, uh, excuse me, are, are you a student here? I'm looking at her, they didn't answer. Then the second question, please, can I stay here for the night? And so I said, this is not my room. He said, no, I'm desperate. I am coming from Cuba. I'm going to Antigua. And I, I went to school in Cuba for the past 18 years. They took, and this interesting thing, he was also from Ghana, I know. So, and I know the story. But because there were a lot of young people they took from Ghana to Cuba to study the sciences. So, so he's standing here and said, I've got a master's in mechanical engineering. I went for my wife from Cuba, but uh, Fidel Castro will now allow me to take. Uh, so, so I just need, I don't have money for hotel. I just want to stay here overnight so I can continue tomorrow morning the next flight to Antigua. I said, this is not my room. He said, listen. I'm saying I don't have money. I can't go to a hotel. But I know if I come to a university campus, there are people here who can help me. I said, okay, come in. We sat, and the first thing the young man said, there is something about this environment. So we were like, what is it? He said, are you guys Christians? We said, yes. I said, what, what was it? But he kept on coming. He said, he wants to know more about Christian faith. I said, okay, we are Christians and, and, and I'm studying theology and medical technology at West Indies College and it's my friend's room who is studying economics at uni and the other one is also studying medical and, but we have been praying and fasting in this room. He said, I could feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Now listen, without telling anything to this guy, he said, I have a top job in Antigua. Do you need a job? Hmm. Remember, I've been in Jamaica all these years. I can't pay my school fees. He said, do you need a job? I said, yes. Then he said, I'm, I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to Antigua tomorrow morning. I'm going to send you a ticket. When you come, you have got a place to stay. I've got a car sitting down. He's telling me things I don't even need. All that I need, basic thing, I need money to pay my school fees and nothing else. And, and when this guy has finished, remember we have been praying about a lot of things. And the guy answers all my prayers. I am saying to you, being at the right place at the right time. Lo and behold, my friends come in and the guy repeated it. Fast forward, this guy flies back to Antigua. The ticket is sent. I go to Antigua. I get to the airport. By the way, when I got to the airport, they arrested me because I went at the wrong time. But, but, but it's another story. It's another story. God, God delivered me. But eventually, I had a job. I made money. I, I, I made in, I'm talking about the 90s. I was able to raise 5,000 U.S. dollars. And, and when I've saved the money to come back to Jamaica, it's another story. I lost all the money. But what I want to say to you, you have to be at the right place at the right time. If you want to make God laugh, tell him you aren't going to do or be at the place when he can use you. God knows how to put the right people in your life. God knows how to help you. Uh, you have to put the right people who raise you. God knows how to put people in your life who will be praying for you, who will wish you well. God knows how he can place you in a certain place. There's somebody here that their parents have been praying for them. There is somebody here 
that your mother and your dad has been praying for you all along. There is somebody here, your grandmother and your granddad have never given up on you. There is somebody here, your Sabbath school teacher has invested in you. There is somebody here, an elder went out of their way to make sure you are still a child of God. My friends, you all know if that little girl, Naaman's slave girl, if that little girl had not informed Naaman about the prophet of God who could bring him healing, Naaman, the Bible says, was what? The captain of the Syrian army, but he had what? Leprosy. Naaman got his healing because the slave girl was what? He was at the right place at the right time. God uses common people. That's my first lesson. God also uses, as I say, common, ordinary people. But the second point I want to, before the second point, let me just say something that I nearly forgot. Please give me a few minutes. Give, give me a few minutes and I'll be done. Just give me a few minutes. One of the things I, I also recognize, that when God uses people, he uses them so that what? His name will be glorified. Amen. Well, he'll bring glory to his holy name. One of the, I noticed that God doesn't use folk who are high-minded people. Mm. God just uses right people or he doesn't really use people who, who feel too good in themselves. There, there is one thing I noticed. You know, sometimes even on your way to church, let me lose myself. Even on my way to church, if I happen to be walking on the streets of Chiswick, I may see a homeless person. The father, he is homeless, doesn't mean he cannot tell me about the love of Jesus. But sometimes we tend to write people off so quickly, God can use that homeless person to tell me that Jesus still lives. God is going to use a young man. God is going to use a young man. So the first point I said, God uses common or ordinary people. The second point I want to be quick, God uses people who are consecrated. What are you saying? In the story, David had a personal relationship with God. Remember this morning we were talking about what? Walking with God. If those of us are walking with God. David had a personal relationship with God. David just didn't trust God because his dad told him to. Young people hear me. David just didn't trust God because his mom wanted him to do so. But the Bible makes us to understand David had a living relationship with God. How do I know? When you take all the, the, the Psalms in the Bible, Psalms 1 to the 150 chapters, you will notice that David apparently wrote half of the Psalms. So when you look at the Psalms, um, from verse 3, 9, 11, 4, 41, 51. Every one of the Psalms, David is like what? He's pouring his heart. It's like he's singing. It's like he's praying. The point I'm making is, if this man who had a relationship with God and he wrote so many Psalms to glorify his holy name, how come when you and I, we're on the road, we are not praising God? Mm. How come when I am the M25, M4, this morning we use M20, I live in Kent, drove all the way around with my good friend Alex and we go here. Whenever you are on the road, whenever you are in a bus, whenever you guys are walking to school, when you get to the classroom, even before the teacher start teaching, you can say a short prayer in your head. When you get to your workplace, those of us who are working, uh, working you know sometimes your supervisor, your manager, they don't like you, but when you say that prayer, the Lord keep me still. Lord, give me sanity. God, allow me that my enemies will not triumph over me. Lord, help me that I become the head and not the tail. Lord, help me that I will be victorious. God will watch over you. Sometime when before even you sit behind your computer, you are already praying. You know, there is a song, a Negro spiritual, it's a, a, a little talk with Jesus who will make it what? Who will make it all right. Jesus is listening to our prayers. So the point I'm making, David, uh, God uses common people. God uses people who are consecrated. And I'm saying to you that when you have got a living relationship, when you have got a, 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 a ways and means where your entire life is committed to God, God will use you. And sometimes, friends, let me just be frank with you. It, it, it's not always about the good things that we need to praise God for. Mm. 
So, so sometimes our days may not go the way we want it. So, so there will be days like some, you are lying down in bed and, and, and your appetite is gone. You are even saying, Lord, help my appetite to come back. There, there are moments where you, you, you feel so low. You are down. You don't even feel like getting up to go to that job, but you are still asking God to what? intervene. You need, you are going through pain and you are asking God, please take my pain away. There is a burden that is what? Is becoming overwhelmed. When you, you are is pulling you down, but you are still speaking to God. You need to get him, you, you need him to get you out of this dark cloud that is coming over you. I am saying to a young person, I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, when we can praise God in good times, we can also praise God in bad times. David had to conquer fear before he could conquer Goliath. Mm. <laughs> Pastor, what are you saying? Let me repeat it. David needed to conquer fear before he could what? Conquer Goliath. Before you go against Goliath, the Bible says when David appeared before King Saul, and, and King Saul was trying to talk him out of the situation, David gave his testimony. He said, listen to me, uh, your majesty. Uh, once upon a time, I was with my daddy's flock, and, and, and a bear came by, and I managed to what? Kill the bear with my, my hands. Once upon a time, a lion came back, tried to pick one of the lamb from the flock, and I was able to take the lamb out of the mouth of the lion and also destroy and kill that, what? that lion. So what David is trying to say to, uh, uh, to everybody in this lesson, said, before you can kill Goliath, you need to work on fear. In other words, because he has got a track record, because he has put something in practice, he's gone into the boxing arena, the bout, he, he has done some hard work. Because he's done that hard work, Goliath was no match for him. Before you can kill Goliath, you need to make sure you work on your fear. If you want to grow on your faith, you have to exercise the power of faith. Because sometimes this unseen and unseeable subject of development. Anybody here can talk about, I have faith. But brothers and sisters, we all know, as the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, he says, for the weapons for, of our warf warfare are not war canna, but are what? But through God to the pulling down of what? Stronghold. I need a Bible reader here. When you go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says, that there is victory, that what? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world, even through all our faith. David did not go to the valley to fight Goliath, but when he went to the valley, he heard some insulting words. He heard those words, and he felt this guy was, 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 was just over the bar because he is talking against God of Abraham. He is talking against everything the Jews or the Israelites stood for. And friends, I am saying to you, before you go to battle, you need to work on your fear. I just want to end because my time is up. The story goes on to say, after David has presented himself, or they've taken him in the presence of King Saul. And, and, and there is a lesson here that I want to pick. You know, the Bible says when Saul tried to talk him out, they say, hey, David, I know it may be with your youthful exuberance, maybe with this enthusiasm you've got. This is not a, a joking business now. This guy is huge. This guy can finish you. But the Bible says when he had given his track record of the lion and the bear, Saul took him to, uh, to his armory. And the Bible says what? He placed the armor on him. And now one of the things I realized, which is very interesting, the Bible uses the word, he tried it on him. But look at that word. It's right in your Bible. He said he tried it on him. Now before you, 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 you can go to battle, there are some things you need to try. Hmm. What am I trying to say? You know, because David knew there are things he has done that has worked, so he could go by faith. I'm saying to all of us, there are some things we need to try in our own battle. What am I saying to about? Because I know when you have tried prayer, mm, when you have tried prayer, and you all know prayer works, prayer will make your enemies your foods too. 
Prayer will open doors that are closed. Prayer will cause you what? To, to, to put food on your table. Prayer will enable you to pay your bills. Prayer will enable your car to run when you don't have fuel. I don't know any of you when you have gone to a situation and your overdraft is all gone. Your, 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 your direct debits are all failing. And, and, and you don't have anybody you want to talk to. Because if I call my brother here, chances are that he may not even give it to me or may not have it. But once he doesn't have it, he will tell so so and so. You know, Pastor Bonnie called me and he was looking for a loan of 100 pounds. So sometimes you are caught in a fix. You don't know where to go. But I'm saying to you somebody, not only about the young people here, but to all of us that we serve a God who has always informed us prayer words because when you have tested prayer, mm, Goliath is not too big for David to hit. But at the same time, he's not big. He's not too big for God to miss. Somebody can put this on Instagram for me, young people. Goliath is not too big for what? For David to hit. But at the same time, he's not too big for God to miss. If you stay committed to, go, uh, to God, if you stay committed to the way God wants you to lead your life, there is no Goliath that you cannot conquer. This morning, maybe there is somebody sitting here. There is a Goliath in your life. There is a Goliath in your way, young people. There is a Goliath who is disturbing you. There is a Goliath who is making mockery of you. There is a Goliath who is talking you down. I am here this morning to encourage you. You can fight that Goliath. But when you read the Bible, the Bible also says the battle is not yours. Mm. The battle is not yours. You have to step forward, but step forward in faith. Step forward knowing that because the battle is not yours, the battle has already been won. But, but, but I, I think I would do a disservice as a preacher in pastoral way when I finish this way. The Bible tells us that there was once upon a, a time, there was what? A, a, another David. There was a David that came into the world. And, and, and the world at the same time were looking down. The Bible says he was born in a manger. He wasn't born in any fine place, in any maternity ward, or in any hospital. He was born in a place that was not fit for a king. But at the same time, when this king was born, at the appointed time, he was baptized by John the Baptist. He didn't just stop there. He went about preaching the good news. He went about making the blind eye to see, the lame to walk. He went about making Jairus' daughter to be healed. The Bible says even on his way to Jairus' house, there was a woman with an issue of blindness blood. That woman stopped by, that woman just touched the hem of his garment and the woman received healing. I'm just saying to you, that, that, that this same David, who is now, not just David by name, but his name is, he came from the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus. And I just want to stop by and tell you that we have a Jesus who have already won the battle for us. Young people, don't be afraid. You've got so many challenges. I, I, as I said, I've got some in my house, so I empathize. Let me say this very emotional story. So, my wife has just traveled recently on holiday. And my son, this same boy, is tearing me around. Sometimes, you know, you lose it. And I'm talking, and he looks like we talk, and he go back and do the same thing. So, I got very mad. I didn't beat him. I don't beat. But I'm sitting on the table, and I, I, I called him. And I, I've noticed, you know, they say how this power of the tongue is powerful. By the way, don't curse your children. Instead of cursing them, use the same tongue to bless them. So I decided I would talk to him. I said, listen, how come you don't know what you want? You're about to go and have your GC. You're in year 10. You are doing the same thing. And no, no, the thing got to the boy. So he burst out crying. He said, how many, how many young people of my age know what they want in life? <laughs> And he started talking, and he's, and he's crying. He was about to have breakfast. Because of whatever I said, I, I, I rattled for a while. And, and so he's crying, and he left the breakfast. And he went to him. And I, I could hear the boy cry. I've never seen my son cry this way. 
He's crying. He's crying. The boy is sad. So I'm sitting at the table trying to study. And this is what occurred to me. You better call this boy and find a way to talk to him. What I did, I didn't do right. And I was finding it difficult. There's a parent here who knew how to. So I, I called him. You know how you do it. I called him by name. He came down. I, I think before I spoke to him, I decided to say a short prayer. I said, Lord, teach me what to say because I need to get through to my son. So I started telling him about my story. I said, son, you have heard some of this thing before. But maybe when you hear my story, you are only looking at the drama side. And you feel I'm saying it to make you or something about I just want to say, I told him about my failures. I said, son, I have failed in this area. I did. I couldn't do it. And I'm just saying to you, I don't want to watch you also fail. And by the time I could finish talking, I noticed I was crying. And I, I, I kept on crying. I said, listen, I'm talking to you. And I'm crying. The boy is crying. By the time we finished the conversation, he stood there and said, daddy, I'm sorry. And since then, I've seen a change. But one thing I do often, we pray in the house, pastor's house, morning devotion, evening, he won't, he won't dodge it. Even when he's sick, we, uh, he doesn't feel like we have to do it. But what I'm saying to you, young person, God is still in the business of empowering you, enabling you to win your battle. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And you will finish your Goliath. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you for the way you have blessed each one of us. In the story with David and Goliath, there are so many lessons we can pick from it. But Lord, this afternoon we are praying for each one of us to be able to step forward in faith. Knowing that the battle has already been won. And so, Lord, I pray you will increase the faith of our young people. That they will trust in your holy name. They will trust that you are God, you change if not. In the moment when they have got their breakdown or they are experiencing any mental hardship or they are going through a, any form of bullying, anything that disturbs them, that brings them stress, that causes them to feel that they don't like them. Father, in the name of Jesus. Enable them to know you are a God that stick closer than a friend or a brother. You are a God that can change the situation. You are a God that can take that Goliath away from their lives. The Bible says even when you could a story had time, the Bible said David was able to kill Goliath with one stone. Father, we are praying you will empower us to destroy the Goliath in our lives. That we will all become overcomers. We will become victorious in you because you have made it possible for us to do so. And so, Lord, if there is any young person here who is going through discouragement, who is going through their challenges, who is doubting, who is asking questions, Father, we are praying for that young person that you turn things around. You will increase their faith. You will cause your holy angels to encamp around them. Father, you will walk before them, be the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire at night in their life. You will defeat the devil in their lives and you will cause them to become the head and not the tail. Those who are looking for jobs, Father, open the door, open opportunities that our young people, our young men and women, Father, they will all excel. Those who are looking for life partners, Father, provide them the, the person, the individual for them. Lord, we are praying for a breakthrough. May you bless our teens. May you bless our young people. May you bless the older folks. May you bless our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, as you know, we're having a special pro special um, type of program, so I'm going to welcome um, Alexander Jesse from London Garner Church. 
He's going to be delivering a short presentation and you'll have the opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, so the topic is the youth and mental health. So fun fact that Alexander passed on to me is in 2023, there are one in five children and young people aged 8 to 25 that had probable mental disorders. So how do we promote, support and minimise the impact of growing statistics of mental health disorders in our youth? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Good. Um, I really want to come closer so that you can really feel me. I've just been told that um, the video, which is part of this presentation, might not play. Ish. I really wish the video can play. But we'll figure it out. We'll find some another way of uh, getting this through. Shall we pray? Our most high God. May you have your way in us today. May you anoint my lips. May you touch somebody with this presentation. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let me just say a big thank you to Pastor as well. Pastor, Pastor was going through some of the you know, very important parts of my presentation as well. So I see if he already knew uh, what is coming. Uh, but we'll, we'll find a way. Right. I want my PowerPoint to do majority of the talking, but at the same time, I want us to have a moment together. I want you to read, so God's willing, these are some of the things, I hope it's showing now, yeah, these are some of the things we'll try to run through. Um, it's quite a lengthy thing, um, and each point, and it has so many other things underneath them, uh, we might not be able to just you know, delve deeper into each aspect. But when it comes to the Q&A side, we will be able to discuss further and maybe try to resolve some of the key issues or some of the challenges that you may have as well. I want you to read this and pay particular attention to reading this, please. So just have a moment and read that. Maybe a couple of seconds will do it. Are we okay? You've seen that. Okay, so um, so please, if at any point in time you know, things are getting to a very difficult point, just feel free you know, to approach one of the elders and they'll be able to attend to you. Um, so please pay attention to that. So this is the other video that I wanted to see. It might work or not, but So, well, at this point, we're going to play the video um, to see. I'm still looking across just in case they've been able to work some magic out of this. Just fingers crossed. Okay. Um, um, depression, um, and um, anxiety, and also uh, just you know feeling like I'm not good enough, feeling like people aren't going to accept me for you know what I am. Uh, sadness, stress. Depression, uh, anger. Being anxious, anxiety, um, fear, anger, and frustration. Um, anxiety and embarrassment are the top of the list of very intense emotions that I deal with. Well, um, 
I had uh, anger and heartbreak were the main ones. Being insecure about myself, like my the way I look and like my body size. Yeah. Um, like I usually just like keep to myself, kind of. I don't. I'm not really like joking around or anything like that. I feel sick to my stomach and as if nothing can go right. I feel like just like alone and I feel like nobody can understand what I'm going through. It just kind of feels like I'm like this twig that's a walking twig that just goes anywhere and everywhere. It's just like emptiness, like a gap, like kind of just like is gone away from my body or so. Um, you just want to scream and it's like your life is all one big puzzle. Ah! I get shaky and my stomach gets sick and my mind is jumping to the worst case scenarios and it's all over the place, jumping to conclusions. My mind kind of like clamps together in a way and I can't like pick out each and every thought that I can because it just swirls around and I can't like grab it and try to work through it. My heart is racing, um, I can't speak really clearly, um, I'm like kind of sweaty and just, um, just kind of not looking too great. I like just get really paranoid and don't know what to do. Sometimes it's like I get like this knot in my throat because I know that what I feeling I can't express it or you can't say it. I'll I want to punch everything around me like I want to punch a wall, a bed, and when I take pictures of myself, I kind of use a black and white filter to tell me that everything will look the same and nothing will change. Take some deep breaths and listen to music and um, talking to someone about it usually. I listen to music, often music that either has to do with the things that I'm feeling or music that will make me feel the opposite of what I'm feeling. And I tell myself that whatever I'm feeling or going through, it's all gonna get better and that it will end eventually. I try to um, just think positive, have positive thoughts and you know, say I can get through it. Um, or I just try to just breathe and just relax. I usually like write a poem or uh, like I'll try to figure out some kind of jazz chords to play on my piano to like mellow my mood a little bit so. I try to remind myself that I'm not the only one who feels this way. I try to cool myself down to make everything go away. Thank you. Um, I know that we didn't have the video but um, I was trying to also make you to um, follow the sound of it. Um, it's not the same um, if you were watching the video. Is that a video we're talking? Oh yeah, there we go. So at this point, I just want to ask you a question. That is what we're going to do next. I want to. I want to turn. I want you to turn to the next person to you, um, to the left or to the right, and ask them this question up there. Has a friend, a colleague, or a family member? Um, in any way, spoken to you or shared with you anything that looks like mental illness. And then the bottom one is, what was your reaction? So I want you to have it just one second, just to chat to the person next to you and find out. Um, has anybody at all, could be a family member, a friend, anybody at all has talked to you about what looks like a mental illness and what was your reaction? I'm going to ask some couple of feedback from some of you. So please, please be ready. Okay, get ready to bring it to an end. Thank you for participating in this. I need a couple of you to give me a feedback on what you just shared. 
Um, anybody at all can do that. I need a couple of feedbacks only. Yes. Anyone can help me, please? Who is ready? Just tell me what you just said with a person next to you. What did they tell you? And what was their reaction? Um, anybody going for it? Oh, yeah, thank you. I have a daughter who has mental problems. And she's, I found her very difficult to, to deal with. Um, she sometimes go into this crime fictions and says that she doesn't know what she's doing and also this voices she hears in her head is telling her to do things that she doesn't want to do. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, can another person share with us? Anyone else? Please. Okay, just a few, a few, not too much time to go, so anybody can add another feedback to it. And I'll be so happy if you want to do that. Brilliant. Um, I'm a mental health first aider at work, so a lot of people tend to come and talk to me. Um, and the main thing to do is just listen to them, talk about what they're going through, and giving them space to process uh, the issues that they're having and not to offer advice if it's not being asked for. Thank you so much. I don't know what you feel, but <laughs> does it hit you as a strange thing when somebody comes to you and says that I'm hearing voices, I'm seeing things, um, I'm going through a moment of difficulties. It looks like, and this gentleman, the person that you knew, suddenly begins to have some racing thoughts. They jump from one topic to another, and you don't know what they mean. They're all over the place. Have you seen something that, like this before? This is why I, did, I decided to let you go through this small exercise. I want you to picture this. One in five children and young people aged 8, 8 to 25 had a probable mental disorder in 2023. You might think it's surprising. It doesn't end there. So 20.3% of 8 to 16 years had probable mental disorder in 2023 as well. Not enough? 2.3 of um, 17 to 19 years also had probable mental illness. In addition to that, the agent referrals you know, to under 18 you know, hit over 3,000 in, in, in April only. And this figure went up again to a record of 3,000. This is the first time we've gone over the 3,000 mark. This is soon after the COVID. And if you look at the bottom part, you know, with 3,732 referrals in May 2022, and this equates more than three times the amount recorded in 2019, after the COVID, something is going on here. I want you to understand the difference between mental health and mental disorder. You can read that. And this is captured from the World Health Organization. Um, um, a dear descri description about what mental illness is, as well as mental disorder, so that you can contrast between the two. So ideally, there are key words over there. So mental health, ideally, is a state of mental well-being. Not only that, that enables you, yes, anybody, to be able to cope with the stresses of life, realize their abilities, learn well, and work well, and contribute to their community. So, 
There's no brainer there, isn't it? It goes to say that if you therefore have mental disorder, then you're not able to function and do the things that you do normally because there's an impact on your functionality. Something is not right. What are the types? There are so many of them. There are many of these. There are some of them you might not even think they are. There are some of them you witness them, you see them, but you might not think it is exactly what you're seeing. It doesn't matter if the person is quiet. It does not matter if the person is also very agitated. It doesn't matter. It could affect anybody. Anxiety is one of them. This is when our worries get in our way. You know what happens to you when you are worried, when you are afraid? This is what anxiety does to you. going the next way. <laughs> there you go. So we won't be able to watch this story. Um, this is another fantastic story I would have wanted you to watch, but we'll skip that. But instead, I want you to see what are some of the types and some of the symptoms when you have anxiety, what happens to you. Maybe someone can relate to this quite easily. Um, so you do have something called the generalized anxiety. So this uh, Normally, excessive worry. Um, you know, anybody can have something like that. Um, it is when it gets too much, then it begins to create a problem in the for you. Uh, we got panic attacks. People do have panic attacks. Your friend, your family member, somebody may have relayed to you that they go through panic attacks sometimes. Um, social anxiety. You know, when uh, there is an excessive fear uh, and worry in social situations and so forth. Not only that, we have separation anxiety. When you're departing, so when you're a friend, a colleague, a good person that you relate to so well, a wife, a husband, you know, you're separating, you're parting company from this person. You go through situations like that. And then obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, this one, we will go through even further during the Q&A time. And then we have got phobia. If you look at the, some of the signs and symptoms at the top, these are the things that you go through when you have an anxiety. You do have your nausea, shaky, dizzy, and a rapid heart rate. You also have sometimes butterflies in your stomach. Um, we've got those. Remember when you're about to go for an exams, there are some, some of these things do happen to you. Um, what we're talking about is when these fear, worries, concerns, you know, stay on a bit longer, you know, than they should be, then it begins to creep into a different situation for you. Uh, you also got avoiding situations, tension, irritability, and also you could be upset and tearful. These are all part of the uh, symptoms that you get. Depression then is one of the mental illness as well. Sometimes when we get stuck, you know, feeling really down, we are low in mood, and we don't know how to get out of this. That is a summary of what um, anxiety is. I want you to read it. This is a summary of somebody's feeling, of somebody's expression of what depression does to him. I want you to read this for one second or two. Yes, and it does happen to people. On a bad day, it's as if the world is, is without a color. That is how people can, some people do feel. These are some of the symptoms. There are so many of them, but just to summarize, in a few of them here. So we are aware of the low mood. You also tend to withdraw from the society or from, uh, from what you normally do. 
uh, there's loss of pleasure. You don't feel like engaging in doing anything. Uh, you're sensitive to criticism. As soon as somebody tells you something, you think they're picking on you. And then, you know, it begins to trigger additional changes in your mood. Of course, there's change in behavior. Sometimes you feel tired all the time. Um, additional symptoms like, uh, you know, your thoughts. Uh, you become, you feel suicidal. And, uh, you know, poor self-care, you know, self-hatred, you know, more or less sleep. Sometimes your, your diet changes as well. And then you have some unexplained you know, physical health issue. Aches and pains, uh, even some additional um, symptoms you can have. Bipolar. I'm sure somebody has heard about bipolar somewhere before. And this is sometimes what people, some people think that you're living in, in two bodies. You know, you're the same person, but you tend to experience you know, different swings in mood. And uh, sometimes you could be up there in a very manic state. You're very, <laughs> I'll come to the symptoms in a minute. Um, but you're there in the spirit. The next minute or maybe after a day or two, you begin to go to the lowest bottomless pit as if you're not the same person that used to be at that highest mood before. Unusual extremes of mood. I want you to read this. And this is what it does to somebody. He said, I am the same person inside, but, <laughs> you know, just, just pick the first line of the words. I am the same person inside. And they're trying to describe. If we had a chance to watch the video, it will, it will tell you more about how this person describes their feelings or their situation with bipolar um, and how they toss between extremes and lows as well. But look at this. When you're feeling depressed, this is how it feels like. You're feeling sad, irritable. You're just sometimes empty loss of pleasure or interest in activities. That is one side of it. But when you're having the manic phase, when you're at the other extreme, these are some of the things you go through. Incredibly happy. And then high in mood. You have rough, rapid speech. You know, your talking never stops. You become restless. And then sometimes, too, you begin to overspend, you know, impulsive buys. You don't even know what's going on. This word probably resonates to quite a few of you. Um, schizophrenia, altered perception, and change in mood. Um, so it affects all your senses as well. Um, I know sometimes, and this is what I was describing at the beginning, if somebody approaches you and tells you that, look, I'm hearing voices, I'm seeing things, I am smelling something, or I feel like somebody's touching me, there is also occasions where you know, people, or maybe somebody tells you their story and say that, look, um, you know, this is when they're going through the delusional you know, state of your mind. And uh, there was uh, one particular person in my workplace you know, who believe strongly that they have a nurse who watches over them. So irrespective of what support you provide to this person, they don't believe it because they already have a nurse who looks after them. That is when they have entrenched delusional belief that there's something which cannot be proven. Irrespective, you can't change their mind. This is what they know. You may have come across that before. Um, I wanted you to read this. I hope it's clear. Yeah, there you go. This is somebody's experience about um, uh, schizophrenia. Sometimes you might think it's not true. Or sometimes you might think this is awkward or unusual. 
it is real. There is a story behind it. There's a story underneath, but we can't watch it because of the, the video. But this is a real testimony from somebody about that. These are some of the symptoms that you may, you probably may have said, you know, heard of them. Um, of course, false beliefs, as I described. You also have um, um, hallucinations. So you're seeing things, you're hearing things, you're smelling things, you're tasting, you're feeling touched. Um, again, ideas of grandeur. Somebody can tell you, I own 300 ships. Somebody can tell you, I own, um, what do we call it? The Trump Tower. I own a whole lot of things. So ideas of grandeur. And uh, you think, <laughs> and at the moment somebody begins to tell you that, you think, what is going on here? You probably, the person is going through this difficulty. Also, the, few, the person feels persecuted. Um, there are people, um, because I work in that environment, I see it, I hear it, and I work with them so many times. And you hear this, you see this. Some people tell you, definitely, yes, I feel persecuted. There are some people out to get me. Oh, they planted some CCTV cameras around. They are watching me. They are seeing me. And they are coming to get me. This is part of this experience that people go through. Incoherent speech and mis uh, mind reading as well. You didn't get that. Post-traumatic stress disorder. So sometimes um, you may not be the person may not be having um, schizophrenia, they might not be having anxiety or depression and so forth, but they may have been exposed to a very difficult, life-challenging situations. Um, you hear about you know, those who went to, you know, very difficult soldiers who went to the war, for instance, they get experienced or they get exposed to very traumatizing situations. And this can cause you a life-changing in a situation experience. Readers, please. Yeah. That's someone's story. These are some of the symptoms that you've experienced. So you begin to relive the experience. You tend to have flashbacks. You tend to have nightmares, intrusive memories, and heightened current threats. And you try to avoid the situation and so forth. So some people who have, um, for instance, um, you know, sorry to say this, um, who have had sexual molestation when they were a child or when they were children, you know, in when they begin to grow up, and when they grow up, they begin to relive those flashback experiences, very horrific experience that they went through. And they try either to avoid it, or they try to shy away or to move themselves away from the situation. Eating disorders. Somebody might think, what is that? Why? It is one of them. So you can have some dysfunctional uh, relationship with food. It's interesting. Listen to, look at what somebody said, wha what somebody shared about their experience about eating disorder. It took over everything. It became my identity. And if we were to watch this story about Dave, Dave shared a very, very important and very crucial um, in the story of his life you know, with us. But ideally, these are some of the symptoms that you experience you know, when you're going through um, the moment of the experience of eating disorders. So you have increased interest in food, eating slowly sometimes. You also have ritualized and compulsive behaviors, new and increased exercise routine, especially those who have um, concerns about their body. So some people feel that, look, I'm not looking good. I need to do something about it. Any food that goes into their stomach, they try to vomit it out because it will change their shape, it will change the way they look, so they want to look good still. Ah. 
Also, changing food rules. We have to, as, as I was saying, covering up weight losses, avoiding eating with others, and then socially isolated and low in mood, and also biological changes. Anyway, there are some others, anyway. So you've heard about ADHD, um, some neurodevelopmental problems, you know, which might cause, you know, when um, at, a, at, a young, at, a young, at a childhood. And then that can also affect the way you behave and how you can avoid. There are so many causes. There are list endless causes about um, all the mental illness that I've explained. And as I said, there are others, but for the sake of time, I won't be able to go through all of them. But look at this. Endless causes of this. So child, childhood abuse or no trauma or neglect, social isolation or loneliness, drug and alcohol misuse, domestic violence, bullying, or other abuse as an adult as well. And sometimes we have social disadvantages and poverty or debt. Or you have bereavement. You know, someone you know, very close to you, when you lose them, you can be exposed to very life-changing experience, and that can begin to affect you as well. Um, we also have some severe or long-term stress. And there's one thing that I, I don't want to miss, um, the impact of COVID. We all saw that. Two years of lockdown, two years of lockdown, it had a significant impact in a whole lot of people. There are some people who witnessed some of their family members, some of their friends, some of their, you know, they lost them. And it was quite horrific. This can be a life-changing moment to you. Remember, different people experience this differently. Some people have very strong coping ability. There are others who are not. So the effect or the impact of some of these things may affect us differently. So some may withstand it, some may be strong and deal with it, but others will go through life-changing situations or life-changing movements, and that alone can affect you for the rest of your life. Yes, of course, we have treatment for it. There are so many of them, and each one of them, each of the three treatments must conform to the NICE guidelines. Look at some of the treatment. We have talking therapies there. Um, it gives you the opportunity, time and space, you know, to talk about you know, what you're going through. And also we have the cognitive behavior therapy. We have medication treatment. There are so many medications that we use in the clinical environment. Um, in addition, so when somebody is suffering from a, a depression or anxiety, OCD, um, we use antidepressants. Uh, some of them, Cetralin, Venlafaxin. There are so many medications around, uh, just a list of few. Uh, on top of that, if somebody is going through schizophrenia, anxiety, we use aripropazole, um, clozapine, or lonzapine, and so many of them. It depends on which one works better for the person. So that's just where you go. All right, so there are other forms of treatment. So we've got yoga, meditation, aromatic therapy, hypnotic and herbal medicines, acupuncture and so forth. So these are additional ones. Why should you worry? Of course, it takes over your life. It affects everything that you do. There's a significant impact on this. You become disengaged. You become risk to yourself and others as well. So you should be worried about um, the changes that this comes about. Support, so many support. Um, somebody said this. And I thought I should share with you. It wasn't until I had a breakdown that I felt my condition was serious enough to qualify as an issue. I could have got help much earlier, but I didn't because of this. It's never too late. There are support. So we have the friends and family. I know this is the very first point of call. You approach a friend or a family member who you trust, who you can confide in and share your story with. In addition to that, your GPs are there. We have social care, we have the mental health support teams who are all around to support you. In schools right now, there are so many you know, support available for many of the schools. 
So you can speak to your teacher about it. At the university level, you can also talk to your university lecturers about it. These are online support. There are so many of them as well. So you can, you can, accept, you can assess all of them. I wanted to talk to you about the Bible and mental health, but I will leave it I know, to the Q&A. So I will pause here, and I'm sure some of you may have one or two questions that you want to share with me. And thank you so much for listening. Let's have a, a prayer. Our most high God, we're grateful unto you once more for the opportunity you've given us to also go through this very life changing but significant event. We ask that, Father, may you bless your word and let us also live according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, church. I believe we've got a lot of questions, but we are trying also to work according to time. So we are saying we are here the rest of the day. We've got all that presentation that will happen from 3.30. And Brother Alex is here. So when we come back 3.30, you can fire him with all the questions you got. And he's also here for him to talk to him one-to-one. -one. So at this time, before the elder comes up, if you don't mind, shall we all rise? And sit there and pray for the benediction. And I know food and meal has been provided for all of us, so please don't be in any haste to leave. This is for our teens. Let us support them. Let's pray. Loving God, we want to thank you for the way. You have directed things on this Sabbath day. We have just heard about this mental health presentation. Earlier on, we heard your word. Lord, there is someone here that I believe that needs healing, that needs divine intervention. The word of the Lord says, you are a man of sorrow who is acquainted with our grief. And by your stripes, we are healed. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. If any child of yours is worried, is going through mental health situation, you are a God that can turn things around. You are a God that can restore. You are a God that can heal. So loving Father, please do what you do best, that your name will be glorified. We want to thank you for the service. We want to thank you for your Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for revealing yourself. And so as we bring our service to an end and as we go in to have our meals, Father, may you continue to let your Holy Spirit abide and impress upon our mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of the on behalf of the pastoral team and the teens ministries we'd like to thank Pastor Bonnie for his message to us this morning and our elder Jesse for pr that really informative presentation about mental health and um, we have lunch provided we would ask that you would stay down here for now and then you'll be called up uh, for those who may be new to Chiswick, we also have a food bank, so there will be members of the community who will be coming uh, directed onto the first floor, and the second part of the first floor is where we have lunch. So please be aware, and uh, please fellowship together. Please don't run away. Come back at 3.30, where there is much more prepared, and you'll have an opportunity as... Pastor has said to ask any questions. And also, if you have any concerns, please do speak to one of the elders, um, myself. Um, there's Viv, there's Tony, there's Burns, there's um, Lynthia. Um, please, if you do have any concerns, don't take it home with you. 
speak to us. We're here to support you and we can work with you by the grace of God. So I want to thank you all and may God continue to bless you as we worship together. Thank you.